Hi everyone, Charles here for MLU Papers. So about two weeks ago, French mathematician Michel Talagrand became the 2024 awardee of the Abel Prize, which is the equivalent of a Nobel Prize in math. The official award ceremony will take place in Oslo, Norway on May the 21st, 2024. Today's video is a new format on the channel. I will first present Michel Talagrand's life before introducing some of his most impactful contributions to our field of machine learning with the concentration of measure phenomenon, isoperimetry, and one of his most famous breakthroughs, the convex distance inequality. So if you're a professional in machine learning, this inequality should definitely be in your toolbox. And if you intend to become a professional, the latest machine learning news is typical interview question, so it's better if you've heard of it. And if you're a machine learning enthusiast, this video is a great opportunity for you to have a grasp of world-class research. Finally, if you're interested in machine learning, don't forget to check out the other videos of this channel, from career-related advice and tips to approachable 10-minute summaries of recent research papers, there is definitely something for you. Michel Talagrand, a unique mathematician who changed the shape of machine learning, it is right now on MLU Papers. Michel Talagrand's life. Michel Talagrand was born in 1952 in a middle-class family in France. His mother was a French teacher at middle school, and his father was a math teacher at prep school, which in France is a competitive bachelor program for the best students. No wonder why Michel was a great student scoring perfect at every single test since his youngest age. Well, not at all, it was the opposite. Michel was not a good student. He had little to no interest for studying, and his French spelling was barely better than a pineapple pizza. His writing was actually so bad that his father had to meet the principal to have his son accepted at middle school. And then when he got there, he was in the worst class, where some subjects were not even taught to pupils in order to lighten their burden. And that is until high school. Now, an important fact about Michel Talagrand's life is that he had a genetic disposition for retinal detachment. At the age of five, he lost his right eye. And 10 years later, on the first year of high school, he almost lost his left eye and missed goal for six months. But what's more, he was traumatized by the fear of losing his left eye, which would haunt him for the following 10 years. Yet, when he returned to high school, something incredible happened. He revealed an exceptional talent for math and physics. To quote his words, he said himself, I had become excellent in math and physics. Why? Hard to tell. Maybe a survival reaction after a horrible psychological shock. Due to his health issues, he didn't go to prep school, but instead, he attended a more standard university curriculum. After a master in math, he was accepted to the French CNRS, the National Center for Scientific Research, where he would work until he retired. He did his PhD in the lab of Gustave Choquet, where he was mostly working on measure theory and functional analysis. In 1981, he met Gilles Pizier, who introduced him to the theory of probability, and even to the problem of characterizing the boundedness of Gaussian processes, which Michel would solve later in 1985, and which would become one of his two most influential works. The other one? The concentration of measure phenomenon. While attending various conferences and seminars, Michel met Vitaly Milman, who was already working on the topic, and was presenting it enthusiastically. That inspired him to derive his own concentration inequalities, including the celebrated convex distance inequality, which we will see later in this video. Importantly, it is one of Michel's most influential results, and it owed him the Shaw Prize in 2019. Next thing you know, a few weeks ago, on March the 20th, 2024, Michel Talagrand became the new laureate of the Abel Prize, one of the highest distinctions in mathematics, and often considered as the Nobel Prize of the field. So I skipped a lot of parts in Michel Talagrand's life, but overall, he did not have the ideal start from nowadays standards. With serious health issues, low grades, and changing his research field from analysis to probability. And yet, he became the behemoth that he is in the world of mathematics, with recognition that extends even to the furthest areas of machine learning. So no matter your current situation, your work experience, or your university major, if you want to work in machine learning, don't give up, because you may be the next Michel Talagrand. And if some idiot tells you that you cannot do it, remember that it happened to Michel Talagrand as well. All right, now that we have seen a brief overview of Michel Talagrand's life, let us see his most influential contribution to machine learning, the concentration of measure phenomenon. 
But before we move on to the technical part of the video, if you enjoy it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to keep up with the machine learning community. That really helps the channel. Thank you. The concentration of measure phenomenon. Let us illustrate this on an example. This is Joe. Joe likes to go to the casino and waste, sorry, spend his money at the roulette. Joe thinks that if he puts his money on a single number, his chances to win are very low, which is true. So every time he plays, he lays his $1 bet somewhere in the left column. Either the numbers from 1 to 18, or the even numbers, or the red numbers, and so on. You got the idea. If the landing number is among the numbers chosen by Joe, Joe will make $1. But if it isn't, Joe will lose $1. Importantly, if the landing number is 0 or double zero, Joe loses $1 no matter what. And therefore, at every round, Joe is expected to lose money, approximately 5 cents. Now what happens if Joe plays only once? Chances are, Joe will lose $1. But with a bit more luck than what it takes to have a bad paper accepted at a machine learning conference, he may also win $1. So we cannot really tell what happens if Joe plays only once. Now, what if Joe plays 100,000 times? His total profit is between 100,000 and minus $100,000. Surprisingly enough, we can prove that Joe will lose between $4,000 and $6,000 with 99% chance. This is called the concentration of measure phenomenon. While we cannot really predict the gain or the loss of Joe at each round, we can predict that Joe's total loss will be concentrated around their expectation, that is minus 5 cents per round. Formally, we denote by x1, x2, xn the gains of Joe at each of the n is equal to 100,000 rounds, and we denote by mu their expectation equal to minus 5 cents in our example. Hofding's concentration inequality states that the probability that the average of the xi's divides from their expectation mu by more than epsilon is smaller than 2 exponential of minus n epsilon squared divided by 2. This is the most famous concentration inequality, and it is widely used in machine learning, so it is good to keep it in our back pocket. Or don't put that in your pocket just yet, keep it at hand, because we are going to use it to understand one of Michel Talagrand's results, who has been a strong advocate of connecting concentration inequalities to the isoperimetric problem. Let's see what it is and how they connect. An isoperimetric approach to concentration inequalities and convex distance inequality. Say I want to design a plastic bottle of 50 centiliters, which has the smallest possible surface area in order to minimize the amount of plastic I use. What should be its shape? The answer, which is not trivial, is it should be a ball. In other words, for any given volume, the object with the smallest surface area is a Euclidean ball. This result is called the isoperimetric theorem. Now, how is that connected to our concentration of measure phenomenon? Remember that Hofding's inequality states that the average of x1, xn is concentrated around their expectation. More generally, denoting by x the big vector x1, xn, a concentration inequality aims at showing that x is concentrated, or in other words, not too far, from some set A. Formally, we want to show that the distance between x and the set A is smaller than some positive constant t with large probability. Visually, if we expand the blue set A into the green set of the points which are at a distance smaller than t, a concentration inequality provides a bound on the probability that x is in the blue-green set AT contained in the red box. Now, if the xi are independent uniform random variables on 0, 1, the probability that x is in AT is simply the volume of AT. And if you think of A as water and as AT as a bottle of water, then it is bigger than the round bottle of water BT by the isoperimetry theorem. Then this shows that the probability that X is in AT is larger than the probability that X is in BT. Next, remember that AT is the set of points whose distance to A is smaller than T, and same for BT, and we obtain something which looks like a concentration inequality. So mathematicians have worked for centuries on the isoperimetric problem, and there exist results for non-uniform random variables and various distances. One of the most famous and useful of them is given by Michel Talagrand for the convex distance dt, and is called the convex distance inequality. So I will not get into the details of a convex distance, whose expression may make us want to keep it at a distance away from us, 
but let's just see a quick application of this result. Given a function f, the median m of f of x satisfies that the probability of f of x smaller than m is at least one half. So if we choose a as the set of x such that f of x is smaller than m, then the probability that x is in a is at least one half. And under some convexity and smoothness assumptions on f, we obtain another concentration inequality, which is also one of Telegram's results. All right, everyone, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next video. I would really appreciate your support. Finally, let me mention that the results of the convex distance inequality that I presented today are mostly extracted from the fantastic book Concentration Inequalities, a non-asymptotic theory of independence, written by Stéphane Boucheron, Gabor Lugosi and Pascal Massar. The reference will be given in the description box down below. Thank you again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.